Okay. We're live. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Wellness Garden Live. It is I, your guy, Andreas. Uh, I am the garden coordinator here. Uh, today we're mostly going to be talking about hydroponics. So this is the hydroponic system right here. Um, this is actually running off of organic nutrients. And um, here we have uh, some ruby red auric. So ruby red auric is, is an awesome crop that you can grow. It's a leafy green that has heat tolerance. And it's gorgeous. Uh, so, um, yeah, this, this stuff is great. Um, I love this stuff. It's, it's kind of like spinach, I would say. It, it tastes kind of like spinach, but it's a bit more bitter. You might want to try cooking it instead of eating it fresh, but you, you can eat it fresh, and it's, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe put it in a salad or something. Try putting it in a soup. I would say that's probably the best use for it, but that is ruby red auric. Uh, heat tolerant, leafy green, beautiful coloration, and of course here we have radishes, and you know, Good luck trying to grow radishes in um, hydroponic tower systems like this, but you know, if you have a smaller radish variety, it can be done. Uh, so right here, and we have two empty towers. Uh, so we're gonna be planting these empty towers today. I brought some seedlings, and, and I'll show you guys uh, what we will be planting. So um, right here, we have some lettuce. Uh, so the varieties are Red Sails and Little Gem, two fantastic lettuce varieties, and uh, here's a really interesting crop for you guys. Uh, so this is actually called miner's lettuce, Claytonia perfoliata. This is a leafy green that is native to California. I've been experimenting with this one. Um, and so California native leafy green, miner's lettuce, Claytonia. Uh, we actually have some growing under the fruit trees over here that I planted. Um, we'll do a quick garden tour uh, while we're at it. Um, and... Uh, um, Claytonia is actually pretty tolerant of shade. That's one of the interesting things about it. Uh, so um, it loves growing in shady, moist conditions. Uh, you'll find it growing along like stream banks and underneath oak trees in the wild. Here's some. This one's going to flower, you see that? And so I've been growing it in my aquaponic system at home very successfully, um, except not in towers. I just put them in towers and uh, except in a media bed. So, so this is your media bed right here. Um, media bed is like um, uh, when you actually have like a physical, oh, this keeps running into things, <laughs> my tripod, um, a physical raised bed that is filled with a soilless media. And it does really well in that. Uh, the um, uh, Claytonia, the miner's lettuce, does really well in a media bed. Why not try it in the towers too? Uh, so uh, we'll be doing that today. We'll be planting that system out uh, with the seedlings that I brought um, and uh, let's let's do a quick tour of the garden. Uh, so um, we're we're slowly emerging out of our winter slump. We've got some peas coming up right here. Um, we are growing lots and lots of legumes right now because we have determined that the soil has been depleted of nitrogen. And when that's the case, you want to grow legumes. You want to grow plants that can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. And so here are the peas that Brianna planted. Brianna is right here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and. Uh, Peas are great. They're great at getting nitrogen back into the soil. Uh, so keep keep in mind that yeah, the flowers right here. Know, Our just, peas are flowering. They're so Pretty beautiful. Flowers. So I'm um, uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, with peas uh, and, and other legumes, uh, a lot of the nitrogen is not actually going to be available to your other plants until after they're dead. Until after the you know uh, you've moved on and, and planted your next round of crops. Uh, just make sure. Uh, if you want to have the nitrogen be available to, to leave the roots in the soil and let them decompose on their own. And uh, yes, I wanted to point this out. Underneath the peas here, uh, we have some cilantro coming up right there. Uh, so thing to note about cilantro, uh, cilantro does not like hot weather, does not like hot conditions. Um, and we're moving into spring and it's pretty warm right now. And, and so, what, what have we done then? How, how do we deal with that when we want to grow cilantro and extend the growing season? We, we, we make a trellis and we grow peas, because what do the peas do? The peas not only fix the nitrogen into the soil to, to allow for more nitrogen to be available for the next round of other crops, they shade out the cilantro. And so that will allow the cilantro uh, to grow in a cooler environment um, and therefore extend the growing season. Uh, so that's, that's how an example of how you can pair plants together in your garden so that they benefit each other. And then the cilantro, of course, is a great companion plant. It, it's an aromatic plant, uh, so um, it, uh, 
exudes, it, it may exude compounds uh, that could uh, repel certain pests. I would research, you know, specifically what cilantro can do in that regard. I, I don't recall specifically, but I know that it can. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at the garden in general. We're looking good. Um, our cover crops are looking fantastic. And so our, our cover crops are for repairing the soil. It's kind of like an engineered weed mixture. You, you select a bunch of weedy plants to grow together in your soil, um, and it revitalizes the soil. It returns a certain other nu certain nutrients to the soil, makes others more available, um, and uh, stimulates the beneficial soil biology, which, uh, especially if you're doing organic gardening, your, your plants really need that biology. Uh, and the soil really needs to have that biology to support healthy plants. Um, so you want to make sure you have that biology in there. That's another point I wanted to touch on before we get into hydroponics. Uh, so uh, in the shed right here, I actually have an example of that. So when you have a nitrogen fixer like peas, um, they partner they partner with a certain species of bacteria. So let's, let's see this. So, um, and you can tell when they're doing this with legumes. These are two pea plants. I pulled them out. Uh, so this one, it's smaller, it's younger, but it looks healthier, right? And this one, you know, it's larger, but it, it doesn't quite look as healthy. The leaves are not green. You can see down here, it's the, this leaf is starting to get a little bit sickly looking. And then let's take a look at the roots. What's the difference? So this, these roots are bare. They don't really have anything on them. But with this pea plant, you see these little bumps? Those are the nodules where the nitrogen fixing bacteria live. That, that, that uh, fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere and, and exchange it to the peas um, in exchange for, for sugars and, and amino acids and other uh, important molecules that the bacteria need to grow. So the plants partner with each other. And so you can tell if your legumes are part are fixing nitrogen if they have these little nodules. Um, and if and especially if you when you open the nodules, um, if they're kind of like pink inside like that, if they're like a pink or red color, that's the color of the nitrogen fixing bacteria. So important to note, um, if you don't have the nitrogen fixing bacteria in your soil, I'll show you what you can use really quick. Um, here? Yes, here it is. Um, you can get an inoculant. So um, this is actually the, the bacteria, the nitrogen fixing bacteria in a dormant state. And you can purchase this online. Um, and uh, if, especially if you're starting with new soil, these bacteria are likely not there. So. Um, if you're gonna grow peas or beans or um, something like that that's a legume, uh, make sure you, you get the right strain of this. Um, and this one will cover uh, most uh, types of uh, legumes that you would grow in your garden, you know, like your food producing plants. There's a, a separate ones you can get for like clovers and uh, uh, like other species of, of nitrogen fixing plants and other species of legumes. Anyways, um, let's get into the hydroponics. Um, I know that we had, I know that we had some questions about hydroponics. Uh, so um, let's answer those questions really quick before we get started. Yes. Uh, so do you have the questions, Brianna? Yes. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn off the system really quick. So oh. one question was, uh, can any plant be used? Any plant? Definitely not. I would not try growing trees in hydroponics. You'll not you won't have much luck. Um, but otherwise, it really depends on the system, and, and it kind of depends on um, how large the root system of the plant is and how large the plant is. So if you have towers like this, you can grow plants with small fibrous root systems really well. So lettuce, for example, lettuce will do fantastic in these towers. Kale will do well. The oric will do well. The radish is a bit more marginal because it's a root crop, uh, because there's not a lot of space for the roots to actually expand into. This, this media right here is plastic. It's hard for the plants to push aside, the roots to push aside the plastic and actually grow properly. So um, good luck with radishes. They, they may look healthy, but the, the roots themselves may not turn out to be um, that great. Uh, it's more of an experiment. Tomatoes in these towers, no way. Tomatoes are way too big. I've tried it, it doesn't work unless you have the micro dwarf tomatoes, that the ones that stay like um, uh, 12 inches tall, like Tiny Tim, you could do that. But, if, but you're never gonna be able to grow full-size tomatoes well in, in towers like this. If you wanna do that, then you could uh, use a media bed system. If you wanna grow tomatoes, if you wanna grow peppers, if you wanna grow eggplants, cucumbers, all that stuff, you know, you can use a media bed, uh, you, can do, you can use Dutch buckets, um, and then other, other kinds of systems. So I, what I would recommend is, is going on to the Maryland Magrum Center YouTube channel and, and checking out the video that um, I, I produced entitled uh, how to select a hydroponic system. 
and that'll give you a rundown of you know what kind of hydroponic system you'll want to, to have in your garden depending on which kinds of plants you'd like to grow. Okay, um, someone from the live asked, please tell me the name of the nitrogen bag you are holding. So um, it's a, a, well, most people would call it rhizobia. So rhizobia is, is the name of one of the families of bacteria that fix nitrogen. But I would search online for legume inoculant. Okay. Uh, legume inoculant. And there are a couple different companies that sell those. You can even get them on Amazon. I, I got those ones off of Amazon. You know, um, just make sure they have good reviews. And uh, once you get them, they should be uh, good for 12 to 18 months. Um, as long as you keep them stored in a cool, dry location. So when you want to actually inoculate your seeds, uh, wh what you want to do is, is you actually want to sort of wet the seeds a little bit, make them a little bit moist, and, and then uh, sort of sprinkle the uh, powder on them and then mix them around so that it sticks to the seeds. That way, as soon as the seeds germinate, the bacteria, uh, the bacterial spores are already on the seeds and, and they're on the roots as the roots are beginning to emerge from, this, from the seed and, and the, the bacteria can then germinate as well because they, these bacteria cannot survive and grow without the roots of, of your peas or your beans or whatever legume you're growing. Uh, so uh, you, can, you can get that online. I would just search a legume inoculant. Okay, and then the same person said, I'm growing radishes and they pop out of the ground. How come? Pop out of the ground. Maybe you planted them a little bit too shallow. Um, I would try planting your seeds a little bit deeper. And I, I would say that uh, it, it's oftentimes normal for, for like, you know, the, the radish roots to be popped out of the ground a little bit. Uh, that's similar not a to problem. carrots? Yeah, I mean, you, you'll see the I tops emerge that. out of the ground a little bit. I, I don't think that's a problem. But if they're like popping out of the ground all the way, um, I, I would try planting the seeds a little bit deeper. Like maybe, I think radishes you normally plant like a half inch. Uh, it could be because of your soil texture. If, if your soil is a bit heavier, then the, the roots might kind of like grow out. You know, because they have they're having trouble expanding into the deep into the soil. Okay. Um, okay. So question. another yeah, question nice. from the from the story was: Do I have to add nutrients or just tap water you have to for add the nutrients. hydroponic system? We're going to talk about organic nutrients today. Ooh. Um, so you can use organic or synthetic nutrients. Synthetic nutrients are very straightforward to use. Uh, so you can find. Uh, um, here's the stuff that we use. I'll, I'll show you uh, for synthetics. Um, so for synthetics, uh, we have this stuff called a master blend. This is upside down, but <laughs> master blend. Uh, so this is a three-part nutrient. So master blend, um, Epsom salt. So uh, same kind of salt you would use in your bath uh, to soothe your skin. Um, and then uh, calcium nitrate. And uh, this stuff specifically, you can get in a kit online, but all that stuff comes in a kit. So look, look for that on Amazon, the Master Blend Kit. I'm not endorsing a product, I'm just saying this is what this is and where you can find it. Um, there are other ones too. And another question, which oh. I think you said you made a video. Yeah. Which one is... second, I'm, I'm going to talk about the organic nutrients really quick. Oh, so, yes. um, organic nutrients, not as straightforward. So you kind of have to, you know, experiment with that. Um, so. This is what we've been using here in this system. This is uh, the um, uh, Neptune's Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer. Uh, this is organic, it's a liquid organic fertilizer. Um, and uh, the dilution ratio we'll be using right now is a two, ga two, ta two teaspoons per gallon, I think. I need, I, I think it's two teaspoons. Um, well, two tablespoons, sorry. Um, tablespoons, teaspoons. I think it's teaspoons. Teaspoons are smaller. I know, I forget. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still, you know, experimenting with organic nutrients and trying to figure out the right concentration. Um, also, uh, in organic hydroponics, you need a food source because you're reliant on bacteria. So food source for the bacteria, blackstrap molasses, unsulfured blackstrap molasses. Uh, it's tons of sugars and some minerals to feed the bacteria. And then, you know, the question is, okay, where do you get the bacteria? This is how you get the bacteria. So right here, Right here we have worm tea. So what this is, um, is uh, you take some worm castings from your worm farm. You can also use compost to make it. So this is our worm farm. Um, you want high quality compost or worm castings. So all the worm castings from here, we take like a handful, put them into a bucket. Uh, we have an air pump to aerate it and agitate the water constantly. 
and uh, then we add the molasses. And the molasses acts as a food for the beneficial bacteria that live inside of the worm castings and then the populations will increase. You'll, you're growing out your bacteria. And then you could use that to inoculate um, your organic hydroponic system because it's these bacteria in organic hydroponics that take the nutrients that are in the um, fish emulsion or the fish and seaweed fertilizer and, that's, and make them available to the plants. And so the bacteria have to process the nutrients first. Uh, so you need to have, you need to have bacteria. Uh, for organic hydroponics. It's, ju it's just like in soil because the same kind of bacteria that exists in soil uh, that help make nutrients available to uh, the, the plants in your soil when you're doing organic gardening. So very similar process, biologically speaking. Um, anyways, uh, this system is turned off now. Did we have one more question? Yeah, it was kind of general. So how do I start DIY basics for the home? That was a question. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're actually gonna be doing a, video, a couple videos on that. Um, the next video, um, I, I'm, I have another video in the works about cover crops, and then the one after that is going to be about constructing a DIY hydroponic seed starting system. Mm. After that, there will be a video about how to start seeds hydroponically, then there will be a video about how to do a DIY hydroponic grow out system. Uh, so, um, but if you want that information now, what I would do is go onto YouTube and search DIY deep water culture system. And deep water culture hydroponic systems are very easy to build and they can grow uh, most kinds of annual vegetables. Mm. So they don't need to be outdoor then, they could be indoor hydroponic you, systems? You can do indoor, you can do hydroponics indoors as long as you have grow lights, because you don't have the benefit of sunlight indoors. Uh, the, the lighting indoors uh, and the indirect lighting you get from windows and stuff, it's, it's really not enough to grow vegetables. Uh, so mm -hmm. unless you had like a really sunny window. Mm -hmm. um, that that gets like that's like south facing and, and gets a lot of sun for most of the day. Then then you could do, it. Uh, but you'd have to have a small system, obviously. So if you, if you really want like a an indoor production size system to produce a, um, a to produce a respectable amount of, of vegetables for you hydroponically, you want to have grow lights. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's get to planting. So these towers are super cool. I like them. Uh, these are called zip grow towers. They just kind of snap off. You know, you, we hang them on this system and then they just come right off. Yeah, let's let's do it on the table. And this is the tool that you use for, for planting. So um, I'm going to uh, we'll do the... Uh... So now is not the best time of day to do this, to be honest. It's really sunny out um, and uh, a, bit, a bit hot. Uh, in an ideal situation, you would do this uh, in the morning or in, or in the evening, or in the late afternoon, early evening. Um, so let's do the uh, let, let's do the lettuce first. Uh, this kale is for me. I'm going to do the kale at home. Um, so the first thing we need is is we need a bucket. Um, so here's a bucket, and what we're going to do is is we're going to take this bucket, and we're going to fill it up with water. Um, also, this right here, this thing that, uh, not the thing that I'm screwing off, this thing, this is a hose filter for removing chlorine and heavy metals. If you're doing organic hydroponics, great thing to have, or aquaponics, because what does chlorine do to the beneficial bacteria that will, will uh, make the nutrients available to your plants? It's not great for them. Chlorine is disinfectant, so you want to use the chlorinated water. Um, if you're doing organic hydroponics. If it's regular synthetic hydroponics, chlorinated water is fine. So we're gonna let that fill up, and while that's doing that, I'm gonna get some seaweed extract. Uh, these plants look so beautiful. I can give you a closer look. These are different kinds of lettuces and All right, here we go. Seaweed extract. So what this is for, um, I'll explain it in a minute. I need to turn off the water. So, okay, let's let that run out. So I'm um, a uh, seaweed extract. Seaweed extract does two things for you. First of all, it contains potassium. And potassium uh, is a, a very, um, important nutrient uh, for plants and it helps stimulate root development and it helps with root development. And it contains these other naturally occurring compounds called cytokinins 
that are that act as a rooting hormone. Uh, so you, you, it's basically to, to encourage rooting. Um, and so what we're going to do is, is we have our dechlorinated water. Um, we're going to shake this up and uh, add a little splash in here. You don't need a lot. Uh, mix it around real good. And so there's our seed soaking solution. So we're going to do a mix of the red lettuce and the little gem. You can mix it up if you want. Um, and uh, I have these, you actually don't want to do that. Um, so what I'll do first actually is I'm going to take the tool and I'm going to pull this out. And I'll explain how these towers work. You can get these online, but they're kind of expensive. They're like $80 a tower. I've seen different models, right? They have different... There are different ones, yeah. Um, oopsies, don't want to make that fall. Um, yeah, so um, basically, these open up like a book, all right? Let's, let's move this. Let's move it. Um, yeah, let's, let's move this. And uh, yeah, so basically, these, these kind of open up like a book. Um, let me uh, turn this. There we go. Okay, that's much better. Much better. Now you can see. Now you all can see even better. Uh, and uh, this right here, this is a strip of felt. And what that does is it absorbs the water that trickles down because what you have in that system is you have a pump in the, in the tank in the bottom. It pumps water to a manifold that sprays it into the top of these towers and it trickles down. And it trickles down through the felt and wets it so that the plants can access the, the water and the nutrients that are in the water. So these are the old roots. We can take those out. Um, and uh, since this is an organic hydroponic system, uh, it's actually a good thing to incorporate biology. Um, and so we're gonna, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get some worms. somebody want to do hydroponics over geophonics, over soil? Excellent question. Um, people have their preferences, A, and B, usually hydroponics saves water. It saves a lot of water. So we're going to put the worms in there. Because um, all those all those dead roots that you see in there, uh, the worms are actually going to help break those down. And it'll release more nutrients back into the system. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's really kind of a matter of preference. And also, um, Growth rates are faster, uh, and water water usage is lower. Fertilizer usage may be lower depending on what technique you are using to grow in soil, because there are techniques uh, for soil that really don't use any fertilizer at all, but those are not commonly practiced in home gardens. And, and you, you kind of have to be doing, you may have to do in ground for that, as opposed to raised beds. It kind of depends on, on how you set it up. Uh, but. You don't have to use a lot of fertilizer, and since hydroponic systems recycle their own water, they're, they're very efficient in terms of water use. Same thing for aquaponics. Aquaponics is even more water efficient than hydroponics, because in hydroponics, you usually have to change out the water periodically, and that wastes water, because it, it becomes unsuitable for plants after a while. Too much salt's building up in the water. With aquaponics, you don't have to do that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get some lettuce out, and uh, I like to just pop these out of here. So 10 plants per tower, one. Do they have to be a certain distance apart? Yep, we're just gonna space them out evenly. This is too sharp, I'm gonna get a stick. Okay, this will be perfect. That's too big. So, um, yeah, we'll just pop these out. And, and so, I wanted to point out this material. See, um, what this is right here that the plant is growing in, that's called rock wool. And what rock wool is, is it's a, a medium that is made from rock fibers. So they take rock, like basalt, and, and they melt it in these big furnaces, and then they spin it into these fibers like cotton candy. And it turns out it's a great medium for uh, rooting, uh, for starting seeds or rooting cuttings, 
uh, because uh, it contains so many pores and it holds on to water and it also holds on to the nutrients. And so these were started in an aquaponic system. So there's nutrients in the water. So the plants are getting their nutrients from the water as well. And the, this medium holds on to the water and, and uh, also oxygen from the atmosphere in the little air pockets. So great, great medium for, for hydroponic seed starting. It's a bit more on the expensive side, uh, but you can find it at your local hydroponics retail. Or you can get it online. And it's, it's, it's honestly, you know, I've had the most success germinating hydroponic and aquaponic seedlings at the Rockwood. I think it's the best medium if, you, if you're willing to pay for it. Um, a tray like this, this much rock wool in one of these trays, it's about $10. Oh, okay. So, you know, that, that is expensive um, for seed stuff. As far as Actually, we'll be four um, because uh, I want to save some of these for my house. And I'm, I'm donating these seedlings to the Maryland Magnum Center. I do this at home too. I, I have a, a larger aquaponic system at home with seven of these towers plus a media bed attachment. Wow. And do you always do lettuces or you change it up? I season? do all sorts of stuff. Um, what do I have right now? Um, I have the miner's lettuce um, in, in the towers uh, and in my media bed. It's doing fantastic in the media bed. So I have the miner's lettuce, I have parsley, um, I have radishes, I have strawberries, um, and uh, I'm going to get kale in really soon. So we're just gonna let those, put those in there. Let them soak for at least 10 seconds, ideally like 30. You want, um, uh, the, uh, you want the, the uh, seaweed extract to uh, percolate into the rock wool. Because it'll, it'll stay there and it'll help stimulate rooting. This is just one kind of hydroponic tower, there are many. Um, and make sure if, if there's any like stragglers coming up, make sure to, you only want one seedling per plug. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay these out nice and neat. We want them to be slanted because when the water comes down, if they're, if they're straight like this, the water's gonna spill out of the front. We don't want that. We wanna slant them so the water goes that way. We want it to go around the plugs. This one has two, so I'm going to take my pruning shears and I'm going to cut this. There we go. These sink to the bottom this time, but they usually don't do that. Also, be very careful not to damage the roots while you're doing this. Don't touch the roots at all if you can help it. Um, yeah, there we go. See, so just lay them out like that, and, and then you know you close it up just like that. That's it. Oh wow. Um, you want them to be slightly on the inside too. So just close up. And you want the, so for these towers, you want the felt to be sitting back about half an inch, an inch. And you also want these to not be like protruding out. Because this, this, because this right here, that's to be facing the front. So, so this one's done. You just want to space them evenly, that's all. Um, and I would say for lettuce, max 10 to 12, it, uh, I, I, you could get away with 12 if you're just doing like a little gem lettuce, but if you have a bigger variety of lettuce, um, the uh, red sails is a little bit bigger, I would stick it there. But little gem, the little gem is tiny, so you can definitely do a 12 per tower if you want. Let's see, yeah, do we have enough? No. Oh, well. It's interesting how you said it saves water. Does it recycle the water, or how does that? Yes, it's a closed loop system. Mm. Being very gentle with the roots. I didn't know you can add worms in it. The oh, worms yeah. won't die. If it's organic hydroponics, they love it. Man. I don't know about so for synthetic, synthetic nutrients. I've seen them survive in synthetic systems, but it's probably not an optimal environment. And besides, like with synthetic uh, hydroponics, you want to actually keep the system sterile or semi-sterile. Because uh, you don't have, because uh, it's not con it's not a conducive environment to like biological controls and in like a and in a stable ecosystem in the water. Organic hydroponics is, um, and like uh, having more life in an organic hydroponic system is actually a good thing. It's, it's helpful because um, 
if you have algae and then there's something in there to eat the algae, then that's good, you know? But you know, with synthetic hydroponics, you're the, the salt concentrations in the water are a lot higher. And so, um, or at least usually, you may not get uh, good conditions for, for um, uh, the beneficial organisms in there, and only the, the ones that are the best. How long did those seeds take to germinate? Um, these are about a month old actually, but uh, usually they're ready for transplant in like, two, in like three weeks. Wow. It depends on the weather. And that's from the seed. Uh, so that's amazing. This one's done. Uh, so what we're gonna do now? So this this is the bottom. So I'm gonna lay this on its side. You can see how I kind of spaced them out so they end up even. I'm leaving some room on the bottom. I planted so many of these cows. More than I can. Find. As I say that, of course, one of them falls out. <laughs> it's okay, it'll be fine. I got it. So then, How long does one of those systems last? One of these systems? Yeah. These will last for years and years. These, and they're these easy are, to fix if they are. These ones are. I, I used to build these for, for a nonprofit that sold them. They cease on a Maryland Magnum Center bought them. But the nonprofit no longer does operations in Los Angeles. It, it stopped after COVID 19. And I used to work with them. They don't break often? Or no, not time. really. These are, these are well built systems. Um, they're not cheap, but they're well-built. You can get cheap systems, but, you know, uh, you get what you pay for when it comes to hydroponics. Mm -hmm. um, hey, there's a the power. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> now, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to leave it here. Let's get the other one. So, let's get the other one. And after this, we'll, we'll start talking about nutrients. Yeah. So we're going to do the, the miner's lettuce, and we have to be really careful with that stuff. Um, because it's, very, it's a very fragile plant, it has a fragile root system, it does not like being transplanted. I have successfully transplanted it, but um, supposedly it doesn't like it. So. Uh, we'll have to be careful, um, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to do in full sun, to be honest, because uh, uh, the, the stuff that I'm growing at home gets some shade. We'll see. It's an experiment. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in finding out how this California native leafy green, which is absolutely delicious, um, grows in, in these towers. I've, and again, I've been able to get it to grow very, very successfully in the media bed. It really seems to love the moisture in an aquaponic system or a hydroponic system. But as far as sun exposure goes, and as far as growing in a vertical system goes, as opposed to the standard media bed, um, you know, that, that is yet to be determined. So that you, you guys get to witness this experiment unfolding in real time on, on Maryland Magrim Center Live, uh, wellness company. <laughs> so, very exciting. So there are no worms in here either. I want to get worms in here. So we'll just lay that out take this out too. You don't want to have excess roots. Yeah, the worms will deal with a lot of the roots, but if you have too many, it can become a problem. It'll clog up. While you're doing that, I'm going to be cutting the compost. Yes. Because mm. we're composting here too. We're making a lot of compost here. Get, please compost. It's the best, one of the best things you can do for your garden and for the environment. Yes, I actually want to give a little I'm shout right. out for um, LA Compost. It's a a great if you don't They're have awesome. like enough space to.
because some people I think hesitate from composting if they don't have enough space or if they don't garden and I don't know different reasons like that but LA compost they have different on their website you can look at the map they have a map where you it has the most um, closest place that you can actually drop off compost and it has the times and the hours that you can drop it off so it's a great um, just a great way to still compost even if you don't have all the tools at home to do it um, yeah or if you have house plants which I know is becoming like a more popular thing um, you can use something like banana peels and you leave it in water and that juice that you get from the banana peel um, you can use that to water your house plants So the menu for the worms today is going to be banana peels. They love bananas. This one right here is, is gotten damping off, which is a fungal disease. We're not going to plant it. Um, we'll just do these. We'll do 10. Um, but how can you tell it has a fungal disease? See, I just plucked it out, but you see right here how uh, the, the stem turned brown? Oh. That's that's damping off. It's a fungal disease that affects uh, the stems of seedlings. And uh, I've seen it, uh, it be caused when, when moisture levels are fluctuating and inconsistent. It seems to like it when it seems to take advantage of uh, um, improper moisture. I have um, lettuce growing at home. And something that I saw that I tried out was if you have eggshells, so something I like to eat is like boiled eggs and the water, if you save the water and let it cool down, you can use that to like water your plants. And I feel like that's what helped my lettuce because it's like so big now and it's doing really well. There's like little tips online of different things you can use to water over your plants. Very delicate plant. But it's it. so delicious. The flavor is very similar to spinach, except it's so mild and delicate and tender. And of course, it's a California native, so when it blooms, it's going to attract your native pollinator. We always want to have more native plants in our garden. Okay, there we are. we got to be real careful with these. Definitely don't want these to perish. I, these took a long time to germinate and come up um, and to grow definitely a slower plant to get started but once it gets going and you give it the right environment it grows real fast also I'm a uh, this stuff right here is very expensive in retail markets you can hardly find it I went online once because I was curious how much it sold for, and uh, this one online organic grocer was selling it for like $30 a pound. It's really expensive. And apparently, uh, um, uh, professional chefs are very fond of it, and for good reason. I think it's delicious. Is it miter's lettuce? Yes. that is it, it is indigenous to California. It's one of the local plants that evolved here and that has been growing here for a very long time. Um, 
miner's lettuce actually is found all across the west coast from like Alaska to uh, Alaska or Washington all the way down to like Chile. It's a very common plant. So actually, I think it goes down to Central America, not Chile. It's like it's native to like the temperate uh, part of the uh, the temperate and subtropical part of the west coast of, of, of North and Central America. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit, it's a common plant, and I've seen it growing in the wild plenty of times. Um, and it tends to grow in these big clumps. And wherever there's a lot of water and, and, and shade. And it's an annual. It'll it'll flower and then it'll it'll die. But it, it it's I've, as I've seen at home, it's it's very vigorous. It's a it's a very vigorous plant once it gets that moisture and gets those nutrients. It'll just take off. I'm not sure if you can grow it during the summer. I don't think it likes hot weather. It's very delicate. Oh yeah. I think, do, is there any lettuce that does grow well in the summer? Yes, a variety called Mirror you can grow in the summer. I have grown Mirror uh, in 118 degree weather in my aquaponics system. Last year when it, was, uh, when it got to like 150, 118, it survived it and it didn't bolt. Kale can tolerate Kale can tolerate the measure, uh, a significant degree of heat. Um, a lot of your brassicas that are like leafy brassicas can. Kale and mustard and Asian greens, they're more heat tolerant than lettuce. But you know, even when, but even then, you know, especially if you're growing in soil, um, when you get into the high, like the 90s and above, you're gonna bolt. Uh, so, and in my opinion, uh, when like. Uh, Asian greens bolting is not a big problem. I like the, the way that the flowers and the shoots taste. Uh, with lettuces, um, bolting, which is when the plants go to flower from the heat and from increased day length, um, it causes the, the lettuce to become bitter. Because if you think about it, you know, like the plant, you know, is, is done, you know, putting all of its energy into growth and it wants to put its energy into reproduction. And when a plant is reproducing, it doesn't want predators to come and eat it. So it produces compounds that makes the leaves taste bitter. It's funny how plants are like... <laughs> plants are very intelligent. They are. They know what they need and they know what they need. Yes. If, if you really want your mind blown, start looking into soil microbiology and uh, uh, the associations that plants form with um, microbes and fungi in the soil. Some of that stuff is, is, is like, it's crazy how intelligent plants are. Um, and like the new research coming out about how trees communicate with one another and whatnot. I need to get a rag to wipe these off. Let's see, do we have any more questions? Alright, guess not. Just wipe this off, get it nice and clean so it looks good. This is the Miner's Lettuce Tower, Claytonia perfoliata, California native leafy green. Interesting experiment to grow in hydroponics. And you know, I have had success with this in aquaponics. Um, it's not in the, in the vertical system. Got a lot of success actually. It's, it's been one of my most vigorous crops this year. Really loves the moist environment. That's what I've gathered. So um, it seems like it'll be a great thing for you to try out. Uh, you can get seeds online. There are plenty of vendors that sell uh, the, the seeds of this plant. I would just say that uh, given Given how warm it's beginning to get, your, your window of opportunity for growing this is, pro is shrinking. So if you want to try growing this, I would, I would start germinating it now. I would do it now. Because um, it's, it's, the, the time is going to come and go. And then you're going to have to wait until next season. Because I don't really think it can handle the summer temperatures we get in the valley. Maybe if you live right next to the coast and, you know, like in uh, Santa Monica or in Huntington Beach or somewhere over there where it's nice and, you know, it doesn't get too hot during the summer. Maybe you can grow it year-round. I would give it some shade. I would definitely grow this in part shade. Um, but it's definitely been one of the rock stars of my garden, my aquaponic system this year. Um, and I also i am trying to naturalize it here in the wellness garden and at my house since it's a native plant and it, so that it will reseed every year. So 
we're just gonna get these all nice and then, then we'll, we'll do the nutrient. The nutrient does it. The hydrophone. Okay. How are we looking on time, Brianna? It is 11, 146. Great. So it's we been about. Of time just to finish this up. Yeah. I'm very glad we got two towers planted. Now this hydroponic system is complete. The radishes are going to be ready to harvest very soon. I saw one of them start to bolt. I guess that's because it was hot, so we're going to need to harvest them. But I, I think that the roots are not fully developed, so we might not get a good harvest. And that's okay. It's an experiment. You know, we're trying to see what grows in, in the organic hydroponic system yeah. in the towers. Um, if you get like small radish varieties, like a grove, like globe varieties, I've had some success with those in the towers. Okay. Yay! So exciting. Wow. All right. Miracle farming, y'all. Hydroponics. Um, yes. We'll do another segment next week on hydroponic seed starting. So we have these beautiful seedlings uh, that um, that I started hydroponically, or well, aquaponically actually. Um, it's very similar to hydroponics. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll show you how to do that next week. Thank um, you. So, uh, are you leaving? Yes. Well, I thought we wanted to do the nutrients. Do we have to go? Oh, Yeah. Let's do the, the nutrients. nutrients. Okay. I forgot about that. Um, so, let's put these here. Um, here, are, here are our nutrients. Uh, so, fish and seaweed fertilizer. Blackstrap molasses, this is a microbe food. Humic acid, uh, this helps retain, this helps uh, make nutrients more available and it, if you have any good beneficial fungi in there, it'll feed them. Um, iron chelate, this is a way to get iron in your system. This is the only thing we're using that is not organic. Um, but it's, it's really difficult to get iron to your plants otherwise. Um, and then uh, Epsom salt, we, may, we might add some of this. Um, and also, Phosphoric acid. We need to make sure that the system has an acidic pH. We want oh, it to be around okay. six, otherwise uh, we'll have problems. And also, worm tea. I'll go get some right now. A common myth with worm tea is people think it's a fertilizer. Worm tea is not a fertilizer, it is an inoculant. Yep. Same thing with compost tea. Worm tea is a type of compost tea. I'm gonna smell it. it smells good. It smells. <laughs> it like looks it like should. garden's coffee. <laughs> yeah, so this is worm tea, and this is microbe soup. That's what this is. So we're gonna put it in. And in organic hydroponics, as in soil, if you're doing organic gardening, you have to have microbes to make the nutrients available. Otherwise, you can't get the nutrients to your plants. So. Two teaspoons per gallon. So we need like, two tablespoons. Um, this is about 20 gallons we need to put in here. So I'm just gonna, one tablespoon is 15 milliliters. So um, we need about 300 milliliters. I'll do a little bit less than that. I'm gonna underdose it. Because uh, I'm still figuring out how to, to dose organic hydroponics. It's it's a, not an exact science with organics uh, because uh, you, there's really not a lot of information about it on the web, so I've had to figure it out. I'm doing pretty good. Um, Gardening is all about experimenting, I've noticed. I'm going to, I'm going to do three quarters of a cup. I think that's good. So three quarters of a cup. Um, have the fish and kelp fertilizer. And this is honestly probably not the right ratio. I would, this this mix probably doesn't have enough nitrogen. I would I would mix more nitrogen. So if you want to have an organic source of nitrogen, fish them over. You could probably run an organic hydroponic system off of just fish emulsion in the last. Um, we're close to that. So yeah, let's do some molasses then. I don't think we need as much of the molasses. You don't want to add too much because it contains sodium and sodium can injure your plants if you have too much in your system. 
And if you want, really want an organic hydroponic system to take, add an air stone. Get more oxygen in there. Oh, goodness. That's okay. I'll do four tablespoons of molasses. And this is molasses you can eat, too. Interestingly. Is it like the same molasses that you use for baking? Oh, yeah. Blackstrap molasses. You can use it for baking. Oh, wow. Turns out that the beneficial bacteria you want to grow in your organic hydroponic system love it. Mix it up real good. Um, I'm going to wipe this off. We'll do a tablespoon, or half a tablespoon, of the uh, iron and the humic acid. I think that's good. Oh, um, I also wanted to add some azomite rock dust. Those are your trace nutrients. Uh, so we'll get that. So this is how you get iron in there, because uh, plants need iron. Iron. Humic acid, uh, I'll just do a... Uh, this stuff gets everywhere, so be careful. Like, it'll, it'll get everywhere. It looks in like fact, charcoal. Yeah, it's it's actually made from coal. I learned that, so oh, I'm uh, okay. I'm not going to be buying more of that kind. There, there's other kinds that aren't made from coal. So we'll do the um, uh, azomite rock dust, and uh, that this has like all the trace minerals plants need in it. Pretty much. That's why it's good. So we'll do like. I just realized these are all the ingredients you use for the worm tea, mostly. Yeah. All organic hydroponics is, is you're brewing a compost tea in the system with a higher fertilizer dosage. That's all it is. Because it's the bacteria, you know, instead of growing, trying to just grow the bacteria, you're trying to grow the bacteria and use the bacteria to make the nutrients available to the plants. Mm -hmm. That's organic hydroponics. Is it going to be as biologically diverse as soil? No way, but is it going to grow plants? Absolutely. So you grow really good plants, really delicious plants. So we'll, we'll do about that much, and it's it's a very fine powder. Don't get it wet; it'll get everywhere. You can see, like there's a little bit of moisture on on this spoon still, even when I wipe it up. And look look how much it sticks. Mm. Okay. So that's good. That's all fine and dandy. Um, this goes right here. Um, and then now we need our dechlorinated water. This got wet, so I'm going to let it dry out. Uh, so um, oh, it's not there, that's it. dechlorinated water. Hose filter, because you're trying to grow microbes too in organic hydroponics, not just plants. So we don't want to use chlorinated water. That's, that's how you injure your microbes, and, and then you'll have a less functional system. It won't kill them all necessarily, but it's definitely not good. Um, we'll do about a half a teaspoon of that. Yeah, Alright, well this is filling up. I wanted to point out the fact that this solution that we made with the seaweed extract we're not, we're done with it, but it's fertilizer. Nothing goes to waste in the garden. <laughs> yep. We'll just put it on the big tree. I'm just starting to wake up. Yeah, after we prune, after he pruned it, you can kind of, yeah, it does look better. You could tell more on the other one. Yeah, we're going to be planting stuff around these trees to help you grow even better. Because trees like to have friends, or a lot of them do. So we're going to keep filling this up. And uh, we're going to get our um, uh, test kit ready. We want to make sure that the pH is right. So here we have a pH indicator solution, which is almost out. And a test tube. So we're going to wait for that to fill up, and then we're going to test it out. You said it needs to be a pH of 6, right? Around, around 6 is good. Um, 
so and uh, let's hang this one on. So you see, you see where the, you see how this works? Uh, so in here, actually, in, the, in the, this tank right here, there's a pump, right? So you have a pump down there, and a tube. It's attached to this tube, which pumps the water from the from the tank right here up into this manifold, which then sprays it down into the towers. And then the towers just drain right back into the tank. It's a very simple system. So um, that's you know pretty much how like all vertical hydroponic systems work. You just have a pump that you know sprays the water into the top of towers and or like you know channels or whatever, and then it, it gets just trickles back down. So this is taking some time, so why don't we head over to the other hydroponics system and see how, what that's doing. Um, same concept, let's look at the tower garden kit. The tower garden's a commercial product you can get online. They actually, you have this weird arrangement with the company before you rent it or something, or you lease it. Uh, but you see the water just gets pumped up to the top and then it trickles down. And no, this is not an aeroponic system. What's aeroponic? Aeroponics is when uh, you uh, have a fine mist sprayed directly onto the roots. This does not use a mist. This uses streams of water that trickle down through the tower. Look at that chard. <laughs> yeah, the chard looks good. The red vein sorrel looks good. Uh, some of the extra plants we're going to put in here. Because uh, I tried germinating some seeds in here, but it didn't quite work out. So, um, And I think that was... The issue was actually the seeds. Uh, the seeds were not viable. And then this is a media bed as well. Uh, it floods and drains over and over again. Um, I suppose you could do a media bed with hydroponics, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you can get the same results in hydroponics with a deep water culture system. Um, media beds make sense for aquaponics because in aquaponics, you, have, you need to have a ton of biology because you're not just taking care of plants and, and converting uh, the compounds of the water from the plants are doing it from the fish. And fish are very sensitive creatures. So, you know, you can have some ammonia in the water in an organic hydroponic system. You can't in an aquaponic system. Uh, so we need, we need to have all this media because this is where the other type of bacteria that is present in an aquaponic system lives, the nitrifying bacteria. Just like in a fish tank, you know, it's just like this, this, this right here, like this is the filter for the fish tank and it's where the plants grow. And this is where the plants roots grow. So that's aquaponics. And then, of course, down here we have tilapia. And if you have a larger scale system, you can raise tilapia to eat right here in Los Angeles. <laughs> so uh, let's check on this. It's full. Perfect timing. Okay, so let's test the water. It's probably going to be hard to read the results. But the, uh, the, I'm a. Uh, because the water is colored. You can see all little particles floating around in there. Yeah. I mean, all those little particles, it's just food for the microbes. As long as they don't clog the system, they're not a problem. So let's let's try and, and discern the pH value here. I think the solution is actually out. So oh, wait, there it goes. Okay, so it's turning like that orangey yellow color that we want to see. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's good. We don't need to add any acid. So yeah, um, now all we have to do, um, this punt likes to jam, so I'm going to uh, put this on first. I want I want these guys to get shady. Um, so this should be a little bit more shady than the other one. I, don't want, I would like these to be shady. Uh, so I want to make sure that the pump is working. So I'll just plug it in. Yeah, see it's a, uh, there it goes, there goes the pump. See the water spurts out right there? Do you mind zooming in, Brianna? Really quick before we lose too much water. Oh. And then, yep, power. it's coming down. There we go. That's it. Wow. Amazing. All right. Thanks. So, um. Really quickly, I wanted to open up the floor to questions. This is your last chance to get questions in during the live stream, to have me answer them live. Um, if you have additional questions, go ahead and use the Ask a Master Gardener feature on the Maryland Magrum Center website.
Yeah, Solandra we'll put the link here. Yeah, Solandra has the link, and you know we will have a master gardener answer these questions, answer any gardening related questions you have. Um, okay. And if if you have hydroponics or aquaponics related questions, I'm really your guy. That's that's like you know um, one of my areas of specialty. I specialize in aquaponics especially, hydroponics and regenerative agriculture. Uh, so um, if you have questions related to uh, hydroponics, aquaponics, uh, now's your chance to get them answered live. Um, otherwise, feel free to ask during the next live stream. Um, and uh, if, if there's any hydroponics or aquaponics related questions, you could use the Ask a Master Garden feature and uh, I'll see if uh, those can get forwarded to me. All right, so. Uh, thank you everyone thank for you so joining much. us. Join us again next week at one o'clock p.m. on Thursday. Have a good one. Bye. Okay.